This is Coach Jason Ballard, and I'm a business wingman. Over the years, I've learned a lot from working in our family construction business, serving as a senior officer in the United States Air Force, and running 12 different organizations around the world. Many, many people helped me get to where I am today, and it's my mission in life to serve as a personal wingman to others. That's what this podcast is all about, providing knowledge, tools, resources and mentorship to help people soar to their highest altitude. Hey, welcome back to the Soar Higher podcast. This is your host, Coach Jason Ballard, and welcome back to the show. We've got yet another great episode in store for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, which is people, how to be more successful in business by retaining our top talent. You know, what a novel thought, right? You take care of people, do things that um, support your people and enable your people to, to, to achieve their personal and professional goals and retain them. Absolutely do things to retain our people. And we need that more than ever uh, in, in today's society. And so today we're going to be talking about that. Um, today we're going to be bringing on an expert in this space that's just doing some, he's a phenomenal person doing phenomenal things to help people individually and to help companies collectively come together for, for a greater good. And uh, it's not every day you meet somebody that, that is like James Klusky. Uh, he is a, a, a spectacular guy, goes from being an athlete to being a business person and what an incredible story and I can't wait for you to meet him. And so let me give you a little bit of a backstory on him. He is the founder of Give Learn, which is an online training platform. He is an author, he's a keynote speaker and he's a coach. He is a former professional tennis player whose passion it is, is to grow people and help people and help companies keep their most important asset, which is people. So James, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Jason. And thanks for that, uh, that amazing introduction. We are going to have a great show today as we always do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, James is a phenomenal person. Uh, I've got a, I've just got to talk a little bit about James here. This young man is the 145th ranked tennis player in the world, which is top notch professional athlete. Grew up in Ireland, moved to America, went to unfortunately LSU, but still a good school. Um, it's not as good as Florida State or Alabama or some of these other ones that, that Ooh, uh, I'm more affiliated that, with. <laughs> <laughs> no, LSU is a great school, great at sports, great at everything. It's, it's, it's a fantastic school. Um, he is a Guinness Book of World Record holder for the longest doubles tennis match that went over 60 I'm like, how do you even stand up and even come close to hitting the ball after 60 hours? That's incredible. And he is so good that celebrities like Sir Richard Branson have hired him to be their person, his personal coach in the game of tennis. So James, tell us the backstory. How did you get into tennis? How did you get ranked? How did, how did you meet Richard Branson? We got to know this. Yeah, so uh, kind of just to go back to I suppose the beginnings of my tennis journey. Um, my mom is so I'm from Dublin. My mom is into tennis. My dad wouldn't know a tennis racket if, if he saw one. <laughs> uh, but she was interested in tennis. She kind of brought me down to this uh, to the local tennis club. Uh, and then what happened really, really fortunately was that a, an indoor tennis center opened near my house uh, in when I was about 14 years old and there was seven indoor courts uh, and there's a great book called bounce, which is uh, by a guy called Matthew Saeed, which is all around this kind of 10,000 hour rule of perfecting something. And, and, and so I was lucky that that club opened beside my house. 
um, I was able to kind of play tennis there every day and, and was obsessed with it. Um, and then the second amazing thing that happened was there was a, a really good coach from Canada, a guy called Larry Jurovich, who moved to Ireland uh, when I was 15. And he was my tennis coach. And he was, you know, I think for people listening to this from a business background, it's, I think how important it is to have people around you who are, you know, supporting you and building you up and so on. And he was much more than a tennis coach. He was kind of, you know, a life coach. And he he had myself and the other players, the other young players in the group. We were, you know, reading books on John Wooden and and Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali and all these kind of um, different, different people. And the ambition was, you know, some Irish players go to college in America and the ambition was, well, could we get a scholarship to, to go to America? And then um, I was recruited by a couple of schools. I took a few took a few visits, went to Indiana, IU, uh, went to Pepperdine in California and then went to LSU. And LSU was, was a, a, a top 10, top 10 team, top 10 team. Um, and I went there and met the coach, Jeff Brown and, and, I just loved Baton Rouge. I loved Louisiana. I loved the feel of it. Um, now, I was only an 18-year-old kid who was making a decision based on visiting a place for two days. So, uh, But I walked away from LSU and I thought, oh, wow, this is this is where I want to go. Um, and I ended up having a, an amazing experience there in terms of, uh, I suppose, going as a, as a kid at 18 to, to kind of go to college there. And, and it was really going into a semi-professional, but by all you know, a really professional environment where we were training all the time. And I think balancing all the kind of academics and the, and a few of the football games and the parties as well, I think it was, uh, it was a really good decision and, and I had a great <laughs> experience there. And, uh, and then I went, and then I went on obviously to play professionally after that. So, so that was kind of my, my tennis journey initially. And then did you ask me about, did you ask me about the Richard Branson thing, Jason, as well? Yeah, I, I, we got to know the backstory. How in the heck did you meet him? How did all that come together? How did he hire you to be the coach? You know, what, what's there's got to be some great story uh, nuggets in there. Yeah, I think the first thing I always say to people is, is, and I'm sure there's people listening to this now where maybe they're apprehensive about making a phone call or reaching out to someone. You know, I think that the power of one conversation or one message or one introduction or one phone call, it's it's mind boggling. So I'm very lucky in terms of where that one phone call has led to for me. But the backstory was I was on the professional tour. I was kind of coming to the end of my career. I was at the players party one night and a couple of players were talking about, hey, you know, uh, Richard Branson has a tennis event on his on his island every year. Now, when I was playing professionally, I was always interested in business, always interested in other sports. I'm a big reader. I was always reading different books. I'd read Richard's book before, um, someone that I obviously knew and was like, well, I'd love to see if I can get involved in that event. Um, and, and to give your listeners a, a guide, the event is essentially you have some of the best business people in the world, some of these founders and VCs and all these types of people. And then you have some of the best tennis players in the world, like you know, Novak Djokovic has been, Rafael Nadal, players like that. And they come and they play in this kind of casual pro-am event. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not I'm not Novak Djokovic or, or Rafael Nadal, but what I did do was I, I picked up the phone. I had uh, a loose connection to the guy who was organizing the event. I called him and I said, look, I'd love to come to this event. What I'll do is I'll stand on the tennis court all day and um, so you'll never be sure to a pro because I knew deep down that, you know, the Djokovic's and people that they don't necessarily want to be on the court all day. They're going for a holiday. So I, I thought I calculated that maybe an apprehension apprehension for the organizer was that they'd be left short of players. So he came back and said, yeah, OK, uh, come over. Um, and, you know, it's it's on Necker. Obviously, I went and then I met Richard there. Um, I met other people on the island, um, had a conversation with them. Um, and then about a month later, I got an email uh, from uh, from the guy who runs Necker saying, is there any way you could come back and, and coach him tennis for, for a month? Um, so I've done that in, in, a number of times where I'd go for a month mm. and, and, and play one-to-one with him. And, and that's kind of when I really got to know him uh, in terms of that that um, those kind of stints for the month where 
you know, you have really, really interesting people coming through the island, obviously, and you're one to one with an icon of of entrepreneurship. Wow, that's really cool, and, and it's a very powerful lesson for people. You know, we get busy in our day to day lives and our families, our friends, and work, and just all the the normal day to day stuff. This is a really powerful example of you know just being open minded, seeing an opportunity that that you are passionate about and you, you know, were interested in and want to contribute to and how one door, one phone call in a conversation kind of opened up to all kinds of things that, and, and I bet if, if you were to continue the story, you know, the story doesn't end there. I bet, um, you know, you know, your work with Richard Branson probably led you to connect with other people, to connect with other people that have led to all kinds of positive things for you, I bet. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I've met some some of the most incredible people uh, in the world. I mean, without without exaggerating, uh, I, I you know, I, I have been very fortunate that, uh, you know, Richard has been very good to me in terms of, uh, you know, myself going out there to the island and got to know him very well. But also the people, the people that surround him and the people that come through the island, you meet some absolutely incredible people. Um, I actually was randomly just... I was in um, Rafael Nadal's tennis academy last weekend in Spain, and that was from I was in I was uh, invited by someone that I actually met on Necker, a Spanish uh, a venture capitalist who's a very good friend of mine now through me, and I met him through Richard. Right, so so again, if I go back to it, I'm I'm thinking, you know, in terms of that one phone call or that one conversation, and where actually what can spring from that, um, and it's not just, you know. It's it's not just who do you know it's it's uh, you know who can introduce you where who knows you all those types of things and and um, I really believe in that in the power of kind of surrounding yourself with with good people. Yeah, man, that's a powerful story. I think people can can certainly uh, you know get a lot of value from you know just take the initiative, just take the chance. You know, quit worrying about the what ifs and what if they don't like me or call me back or what if this and what if that. Just just do it. Yeah. And uh, what I was going to say, Jason, the what if piece for me, and I genuinely remember kind of having this was what's the worst that he can do is the worst that he can do is say no. He'll just say no. I mean, I'm probably right. not going to see the guy again, right? That's the worst. And then That's I do right. actually remember, genuinely, I, I remember in 2015 going on to the island and you know, we've had programs on our on our platform on imposter syndrome and, and you know, dealing with kind of confidence and, and lack of confidence and so on. And I remember actually going on to the island thinking, well, you know, I don't belong here at all. What, what am I doing? You know, what oh am I goodness. doing here? I'm completely yeah. out of my depth. What are these people going to talk to me about? What do when? But I think you just have to try and you know, put one foot in front of the other and just, again, like you said, just do it. It's like, you know, it's, it's, you just, you just have to put yourself out there. And, and, um, in terms of, uh, in terms of networking and business and all those types of things, I think it's, you know, you don't, you don't learn how to, what's the saying? You don't learn how to swim by reading it in a book. You know, you need to, you need to put yourself, <laughs> you need to put yourself in the situation, throw yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to get wet at some point, you know, preferably the <laughs> yeah. deep end, you know, you, you can't hang out in the kiddie pool all day. Right. Exactly. Um, well, that's phenomenal. Well, you talked about kind of that mindset, right? You, you were like, yeah, I got invited to this Island. I'm going to meet these people and these people are, you know, in, according to you and kind of your perception, like these are bigger than life kind of people that may have done some things different, may, may, uh, you know, have, have reached some level of success that maybe you did or didn't have at that point and, and you were comparing yourself to them, right? So how did you, and you let your mind for a minute, just kind of go down this path of, well, what are the, what am I going to talk about? And I, am I going to be able to carry on a conversation or what are they going to, you know, I, they're going to have all this value in the conversation, but I may not be. And you get in your head, right? You start thinking about mm -hmm. this, you start preparing for this, how did you overcome that? How did you like filter that out and, and hit the gas pedal and drive through that and, and just execute? How did you do that? 
Yeah, really good question. I mean, I, I think I was at something a couple of years ago, and someone someone asked the question. It's one thing to get in the door, but how do you stay in the door? And I thought that was a kind of a good, <laughs> good, good good way of saying it, you know. And uh, you know, I, I I think it I think for me it comes back to you know people are people. So, and I think it's it's having that kind of EQ around, um, you know, being yourself, but also kind of believing in yourself as well, and be- believing that you do add value and you you are. Um, you are adding value to the conversation or whatever it is. Um, one piece of advice I, I got years ago was, and I, and I would kind of do this typically, would be, you know, read the newspaper every day or watch the news or be up on kind of current affairs, different things like that. Because I think if you if you meet someone from a certain industry who um, maybe an entrepreneur, a business person, they're not expecting you to be an expert on their industry. But if you have like a, you know, if you have a high level, um, understanding or a high level you saw something in the news that such and such airline did something or such and such whatever did something I think that's a, that's a, that's a good thing so being being kind of having that general knowledge I think is important um, and then I think the mindset is is it's like look we all have that kind of pebble in our shoe or that rock in our shoe and it's just you know the rock is there it's 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 it, it, it's it's not, it, it hasn't necessarily, I'm not saying it goes away, you know, so it's like just putting, you know, being, just putting yourself out there and kind of pushing through those apprehensions that you have. Um, we, a couple of years ago in tennis, um, we worked with a, a, a boxing coach who worked with a number of Olympians in Ireland, number of medal Olympians. And uh, he had a, he had a quote, he said, improvement comes on the edge of chaos. And it's, huh. it's, you know, that kind of comfort zone piece and putting yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and putting yourself into those situations. I think you just, you learn by doing and, and uh, not be afraid to take chances and, and, and uh, believe in yourself. Yeah, and that's powerful. And and I think I, yeah, that's, that's really cool. You know, improvement comes from kind of being on the edge of chaos because you got to get pushed. You got to, you know, nothing great ever happens being in your comfort zone, right? It's it's when things don't go well, when you're put in a situation where you got to adapt, you know, that opens up doors that it teaches you things and it, it brings things into you that you're probably not thinking about in your safe day-to-day zone, right? And so, yeah, I I definitely see that's powerful. And, you know, for the folks out there listening, you know, everybody wants to go to the club and have a few drinks and dance and have fun, but it's it's always the people that are extra. You know, they're, they're trying too hard, trying to... Uh, uh, do things they probably shouldn't be doing. And, and those are the people that get kicked out of the bar, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody that gets kicked out of a bar by the bouncers, throwing them out on the, on their, on their back backside is because they're disruptive. Like they're trying too hard. They're being obnoxious and overboard and, and just, you know, uh, just, just not being themselves, like just being calm, yeah. just being you, just being, um, happy with you. And know that everybody really is the same, even though you may be around somebody that has more money or a bigger title or they're famous or something. At the end of the day, people are people. Mm-hmm. They have heart, souls, feelings, emotions, and they, they, they just want to connect with people. They put their pants on the same way everybody else does, right? And mm-hmm. so I, I think that's great. You find a way to connect with them. Try not to be that person in the bar that's causing problems, trying too hard to be something you're probably not. And mm. then you that that keeps things in a situation where you keep getting invited back, right? Mm. So interesting. That's really, really cool. I'm I'm laughing thinking of um uh Saturday Night Live, you know, the the uh cat more cowbell and he's like uh, I put my pants on one leg at a time uh, except to make gold records. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, except for that. But you know, that one person makes records, one person has, you know, development yeah, yeah, programs yeah. that help people forever and some people coach, some people, you know, yeah, invent yeah. uh, you know, important things that save people's lives, you know. You exactly, everybody yeah, yeah is important and everybody has a place. Everybody can, can do things to contribute. 
And, you know, whether you make a widget that goes in, you know, some manufactured equipment that, you know, allows a building to be built or allows something to happen in the world versus somebody that sings songs and acts in movies, at the end of the day, it 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 all matters. You everybody needs everybody, and everybody has different skills and talents that contribute to the world. And so, you know, stick to yours and be the best that you can be, and be genuine about it. I think uh, is a great lesson you're teaching us here. Completely, yeah. Yeah. Well, James, you 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 are an all star tennis player. Um, got an opportunity to be around some some pretty important people, business people, entrepreneurs, which which are you know an interesting group to be around. There's always fun conversation. There, are, they, you know, it's 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 always lively when you're around a bunch of entrepreneurs, no matter what you're talking about. And so, how mm-hmm. how did you go from tennis and coaching and all of that into business and, and where you are today with your, uh, with your, uh, platform that you have now. Yeah. So, so, um, when I was finishing playing, I was always, I was always really interested in, in, in business. I was always a kind of, a I was always thinking of ideas and, and, um, it was definitely something that I think a lot of players end up very focused on their sport, which I was incredibly focused but I loved reading books from entrepreneurs and, and, and sports people and people from different backgrounds and so on. And then actually what happened was I ended up uh, in my tennis club in, in, in Dublin. I ended up being introduced to a guy who uh, was a really successful business guy. So he was CEO of, of a big company in, in Europe. Um, and then he, he retired from there and he moved into executive coaching. And so he was, he was an executive or he is an executive coach and he actually, uh, so we had this relationship again, kind of back to the, you don't ask. I, I said to him like, Hey, maybe I could, I could coach you tennis and you could give me some coaching in business or whatever. So we had this relationship where we still, we still have actually spoke to him this morning. So he, um, I played tennis with him, coached him, and then we would go for a coffee after and have a chat and he would kind of, you know, uh, really support me and help me. And I kept fundamentally, I kept coming back to this piece around like being passionate about people and performance and being at your best and so on. And uh, between the jigs and the reels, I ended up kind of in a in a company which just runs programs for corporates. Um, so I worked there for a little bit and then I always kind of wanted to do my own thing um, and then basically went out on my went out on my own. Um, and made that transition and, and it was look it was hard it wasn't easy but again the the um i suppose the support of 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 that kind of sports network uh not being afraid to ask people to go for a coffee not being able to ask people for uh, afraid to ask people for advice and actually how i kind of got the business going initially was i used to host um and i still do i'm hosting one next month I'd host small kind of CEO get C suite get togethers uh where we discuss topics like leadership and high performance and work life balance and all those types of things and, and I'd bring a group of kind of twelve leaders together. And then what really stemmed from that was those people started asking me into their organizations to give talks, to run programs and, and and I was, I was also, I should say, I was doing my executive coaching qualifications in the background as well. Um, so it was kind of, a, it was, uh, I, I'm trying to kind of summarize that, but really what I, what I worked out with, with Stephen, the coach was, and, and I think fundamentally what we did was we said, look, I can walk into a tennis club tomorrow and I can coach, you know, a hundred hours a week if I want. But actually what I decided to do was to take a little bit of a risk and say, okay, I'm going to coach tennis three days a week or two days a week for, for, you know, core income. And then actually the day a week or two day, other two days a week, I'm actually going to explore the business side and, and go into organizations and, you know, have coffees with people, learn from people. Um, and that's really the way I approached it. And he, I remember him saying to me, like, naturally I'll, I'll transition away from the tennis coaching more into business. And that's kind of naturally what's, what's, what's really happened. You know? Yeah. Wow. 
So as you transition into business, you've gotten into the, the coaching and training side of things. Uh, what gave you the, the idea to come up with this, this development platform, uh, give, learn, you know, so were there trends you were seeing or are there things going on on kind of a macro level that your you know, needs, gaps, issues, yeah. concerns, you're like, Hey, you know, I can help here and here's how I can do it. Or how, how did, how did you come to the point of, of creating that, that uh, company yeah, a platform? Co- a couple of different things. I mean, there's research from Harvard that 85% of job success comes from having well-developed soft and people skills, 15% yeah. from technical hard skills. And I just started, you know, noticing that a lot of companies really spend a lot of time on technical training um, and, and not as much on the kind of softer skills side. Um, and I was just really passionate about people. And, and, and it was really what I was kind of hearing from, from, from speaking to people. Secondly to that, I believe in like business as a force for good. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to create a business for profit, but also a business that, that does good. And um, so, so we link learning for companies. We link learning to doing good that users, uh, when they, when they take our classes and attend our classes, um, they, they earn points and they can use those points to donate to, to social causes. And then thirdly is in terms of our classes and our programs, I've been really lucky in terms of the people that I've met globally. Um, that we have some incredible, incredible uh, people delivering classes. Like, you know, we've had rocket scientists, astronauts, um, and again, people that I've met through tennis and and not th- and through introductions and so on. So it's really a combination of things. Um, and then I I really believe that you know companies need to you know obviously win and and retain the best best talent and and you know how you do that is really valuing people, investing in people, giving them opportunities for for development. Um, and I really believe that Give Learn is, is doing a, a great job at that and, and is continuing to do a great job on that. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't want to learn from an astronaut, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to <laughs> sign up for that class, right? You know, hey, Buzz Aldrin's here. If we're going to talk to you about rocket science and it's like, yeah. every, everybody would want to do that, right? Yeah. So we we had um, Sharisa Bandla who, who went up on the first Virgin Galactic flight with Richard. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, so she was she was amazing. Um, uh, third Indian woman to go to space, and then we also the rocket scientist, uh, a guy called Kurt Long, who's an entrepreneur who who actually, it's funny. I actually approached Kurt about giving a class on on listening, or sorry, on on leadership, and he came back to me and said, you know what, I'm really interested in leadership. However, in terms of my business. Um, so he scaled a number of businesses. He yeah. said, li- listening is, is the greatest business asset you need to develop. So he's given a couple of classes on, on the topic of, of listening. So, um, yeah, so it's great to have kind of fascinating people from, from different, uh, industries. And then I, I, and that's actually a corner, a, a key point for me as well as I think sometimes people in companies, we get very siloed in our industry. So if we're in accounting or legal and so on. Where there's a lot of power in listening to someone from a different different space, different industry, different country, different background, um, just getting that different perspective. Yeah. There's always well, what what's the old saying? There's there's always more than one way to skin a cat, right? You know? Yeah. So there there's there's your perspectives in the world, and then there's, you know, ten others, right? If you're a fan of uh any of the uh, kind of assess the individual assessments out there. I used one called DISC, D I S C, and you know that uh, assessment breaks people down into four groups. But those four groups are very diverse, you know. And and in fact, I just taught a class yesterday about this at, at one of my clients' um, uh, company get-togethers. Right, we had a big group of people and we talked about this very same topic. Um, how when I was running an organization many years ago, the, the guy, we had a problem in the company. It was an urgent problem and we got everybody together and there were certain people that 
had the loudest voices that dominated the conversation in there. And there were some people that never said anything in there. And right. So you got these different types of people, different personality types, different intellectual levels, different everything. Right. And we went with a, a solution that was the wrong solution that cost one million dollars to recover from. So a few days later, I'm walking around the office and I came up to to one of the engineers and was just having a kind of a conversation with him. I said, hey, what do you think about what we're doing here and this issue? Just, I don't know, I'm still wrangling with this and it just, I, you know, and he's like, well, I think this, and I think we we need to look at it from this perspective. And he started talking about it and it just kind of a light bulb moment hit. And I'm like, oh my God, yes. Mm. And I said, draw this out on the whiteboard. So we got on a whiteboard, got an expo marker. And we started mapping. This. I said, explain this out. And as soon as he did, I knew he had the right answer. Mm. And we got everybody back together I said, you're in charge. You run the meeting and talk to everybody about it. Everybody agreed. And this, he was an introverted kind of guy that didn't speak up very much, but he was the smartest guy in the room that never said anything because everybody else was rallied around the loudest talkers in the room that kind of, you know, like to dominate the conversation. And that was a very costly mistake. And I learned from that. I'm like, you know, everybody has a perspective and, and you should at least before make decision, make sure everybody's perspective is understood and, and considered before making, you know, especially really important decisions. So, um, powerful James, very, very powerful. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. And I just, when you're saying that, Jason, I'm thinking of, just the knowledge in the room that's not tapped into in terms of those situations, right? And I think, I think in Kurt's session, he talked a lot around, well, you know, he was kind of, he had a, the last company he sold, um, he was talking about sales and how you, we have this opinion that the sales, you know, the salesperson is going to be this big extrovert kind of person. Well, actually, you know, not always the case, right? There's int in, like introverts are great sales. Maybe they're better at listening. Maybe they, you know, different yep. people have different different uh, skill sets, and it's really tapping into that and understanding that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think sometimes we don't appreciate that enough. And and I think you're a hundred percent right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about give learn, like. What all types of trainings do you offer on that? How mm. do you offer that? Because you're talking about some people that are kind of outside your company coming in to do some of these trainings and talks. How does this work? How 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 do people engage with it? And um, how do you serve people through this system? It sounds uh, pretty pretty unique and and fascinating. Yeah. So if you if you want to learn more, you can go to givelearn.net. Um, so we have a we have a full calendar of of classes. Uh, so we have a full program, one class a week. We have a different theme each month, and the theme changes month to month. All the classes are virtual. All the classes are live. So users can they come to a live class from around the world. They can engage with other users. They can engage with the presenter. Um, as I said, they earn the points for attending the live classes. Um, and then in terms of in terms of topics, we sit very much in that soft skills area. So in January, we had uh, the Dream Big Mindset with Charissa um, and then also Jerry Duffy, who's a TED speaker. He's he's uh, he ran yeah. uh, 30 marathons in 30 days or something crazy like that. In, Gee, in, yeah, <laughs> in, in, that's what I said. <laughs> Poor guy. In, yeah. In in in, uh, in February, we had business communications, which was around kind of dealing with conflict boundaries for communication and so on, March presentation skills. Um, and again, four weeks, four, four classes a month um, on, on each program. And then users have access to the notes subsequently and so on. Um, and uh, when you sign up, you receive a calendar invite to all the sessions. You have access to all the previous classes and content. Um, and uh, yeah, so we work with companies around you know, what topics and themes they would like to see, what, what are they hearing in the workplace, um, how, can we, how can we serve them. Um, 
with a range of different companies across different industries, and um, because obviously how important soft skills across across all areas. Um, if people want to learn more, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. So James Kluski, C L U S K E Y, or GiveLearn.net. Uh, you can find out more. Awesome. Well, this sounds so. It sounds very interactive. So, can the students uh, or the people signing up? It sounds like a monthly subscription based kind of a platform. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So, we have two two options for subscriptions. One is the company pays a monthly monthly fee, uh, depending on the company size, um, and then we also have a, a subscription fee if it, if an individual user wants to sign up as well, um, which we're which we're launching in the next. But it's actually live now, but it's very much launching in the next few days. Um, so those two options for people to sign up. Um, the classes are interactive in that, you know, users come to the class, they can engage with the presenter. The pr presenter will use, you know, chat box, uh, polls. People can unmute themselves. Uh, we Our classes are 45 minutes long. Um, so we also kind of need, we are tight in terms of time. Yeah. And that's really just being conscious of, of how busy people are, right? Um, but, um, you know, the fact that you can come to a live class with, uh, you know, an astronaut or, uh, you know, experts from around the world from different industries, is, I think it's pretty powerful. Yeah, I think that's great. I think a lot of online platforms that, that I'm aware of, you know, it's kind of canned cookie cutter kind of material and it's self-paced and you click through it and you're reading some slides and you're looking at some video clips of something and, and it, and it's good. There, there's nothing wrong with it, but a lot of people get bored with it. It's not engaged. It doesn't answer questions. It's maybe not unique to them and their situation or maybe where they're at in their specific point in their careers or mm. business journey. Um, and a lot of these online platforms um, have mostly uh, people from academia in there. Now, again, nothing wrong with that, right? College professors are great. People in academia do phenomenal work. I don't want to be negative at all. However, sometimes people in academia that stay in academia a lot become, at least be perceived as more theoretical or, or academic about things, right? Mm. And I think sometimes that can create some disconnect. So I like your platform and how you're describing it because you get real world experts, people like out there doing it. They're not in a classroom every day. They're not just talking main point number one, main point number two, main point number three. Okay, questions, you know, there, there's this whole new level of perspective and engagement that I would think people get even more value from. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, you, you made the points better than me. Uh, I think, um, I, I, so I believe in the power of kind of being live with someone. Now, obviously they're virtual classes, but I believe in yeah. that actually coming to a live class, being able to engage with, you know, and our community is passionate about performance and, and, and obviously soft skill development and how important that is. Um, now we do record the classes and users have access to them after, but I want to really encourage people to come to the live classes because I think that's where the magic is. Um, and yeah. then I'm, I, I fundamentally agree with you around the, the kind of academia, uh, academic piece in that, um, you know, and this is, and again, like you said, you're not against, uh, professors or anything, but I, I love the, I love listening to people and learning from people that have have kind of been there worn the t-shirt essentially or, or are wearing the t-shirt so um we you know typically have people who are doing it in the real world and um, so it's not like a you're not it's not a it's not a uh a, a class at harvard for example it's it's, it's much <laughs> more kind of real real world yeah. learning right yeah, I mean, I've got an MBA. I've got multiple degrees. I've learned from many professors in the business space, and they're smart people, good people, knowledgeable people, and they did a great job of teaching, you know, the business principles and practices. But, you know, then uh, I got 10 no's one day, and I got felt defeated. And then my mindset got disrupted, and I didn't know what to do. And mm. they didn't teach you that in class, you know? No, no. Um, I. 
I, uh, you know, we're, we're in, in, in some sales uh, arenas, you know, it, it different venues selling things and we weren't selling it exactly how we needed to, right? There were some things mm-hmm. that were still missing from that whole value proposition that, and, you know, they didn't teach that in, in the class. So, you know, I think it's great to get, get, get the academic aspects of it because they provide the foundation, the principles for which you build your career and your business. And you have to have that strong foundation. If you don't have a strong Mm. foundation, you really can't build anything on, you know, loose ground. Right. But once you've got those foundations and you can connect to experts that are coaches or astronauts or physicists or, you know, business uh, moguls, Um, they just add a whole nother dynamic to it, you know, that, that it's lessons learned. It's the school of hard knocks and, and what works for them, what doesn't work for them. And it's also unique to people, right? Mm -hmm. Do you find it that, that people like, like two people can do almost the same thing, but one's more successful than the other because they're just different people. They show up differently, talk differently, engage differently, and that matters. Mm, mm. Completely, it matters. Yeah, I I one hundred percent agree. Um, you know, I think there's there's you know one of the things I would have learned from Richard and and is that kind of quest for learning and that quest for knowledge and that we're always learning. Um, you know, I remember him being on Necker once, where he invited me up to the house to. There was someone speaking. There was a group on the island. There was some. There was an expert speaking. And I went in and he was sitting in the front row with his notebook out, jotting down some notes. And sometimes people think, you know, these people have essentially made it and they know it all. So what, what do they need to need to learn? But, you know, I think we're always we're always learning. And I think there's that lifelong quest for learning. And, yeah. you know, in terms of give, learn and, 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 and the soft skills development and so on, I think. You know, as we move into this world where, um, you know, chat GPT and all these types of AI products, right, I think the so- I think softer skills are going to become more and more important. Um, and we had actually, a, we had a, a we, and we will this year as well, we had a program, a course on networking, so where you can learn, you know, how to network. I mean, who teaches you how to network, right? I mean, you, you know, it's, whoever says, like, this is how, this is how you network. And, but our, our class, um, our lecturer, uh, who he, and again, real world example, he raised, he raised 250 million for an organization. Um, and essentially he used to go out around the world and, and a lot to America and ask people to, to write checks, write checks mm. for, for Ireland. Um, and one of the things he quoted was a, a, a study, which was, um, a thing called the pie theory, which was, uh, 10% of your career success comes from having uh, comes from your actual performance and he said look that that sounds absolutely completely crazy but the i stands for image and the e stands for exposure so the image piece was what do people say about you when you're not in the room and e on exposure was who's seen you in action who's seen you with a client who's seen you um, you know, hosting someone and so on. So like if you're working in a company, you don't necessarily have to be an entrepreneur, but if you're working in a company, you, you know, it, it's it, like the, the minimum is you do your job, right? That's kind of a given. You get the job, you perform. That's, that's we, we take that as a granted, but the I and the E, those are the things and these kind of skills, you know, whether it be presenting or your mindset or your resilience, and these are the types of skills that will differentiate you and help you excel and get to the next level. So, um, yeah, so I think we need to, we need to really keep learning and, and pushing ourselves and, 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 uh, with these, with this kind of development piece. Yeah. Well, well, James, as we are kind of wrapping up the podcast today, I want to connect a dot here that hasn't been connected. You, you've got a great phenomenal, company and platform that really helps people where I think it matters the most, the soft skills, the people skills, the engagement, um, the, the enlightenment, the enrichment, um, that people get by connecting to your, to your, uh, software and in your online 
live classes and with real experts out there. So if you're a business uh, leader, business person out there, you got a company and you want to, you know, invest in your people and you want to do that smart. There's a million things you can do to invest in your people. There's a million programs, classes, whatever things you can do to put them in. It's kind of overwhelming. Um, what type of results are you seeing? So people sign up with you, their people get on these platforms and they're learning these skills and improving and growing and evolving. What type of results are people seeing through that? And, and how is it allowing people to, to stay in the company longer? Is it allowing them to grow and be promoted? I mean, what, what are some of the, the impacts you, you guys are making on some of these folks out there? Yeah, I think the the first part of your question, I think for companies, you said there's there's, you know, in terms of resources and so on. We work with a lot of small and medium sized businesses as well, where, you know, Give Learn has a full a full um, calendar of classes. So, you know, you don't the the business owner doesn't need to necessarily be you know chasing someone to give a class on X or Y. So that full calendar of solution is there. Secondly. You know the feedback in in terms of the classes. Um, you know people are feeling more motivated after attending the classes. So we we survey all our users after after classes and and get feedback from from programs and so on. And then the, so I think two things. One is people are more motivated after attending the classes, and then secondly they feel more valued by their company by being given give learn as a, as a gift or benefit. Um, and I think. You know, I don't have the stats completed to hand on what I'm about to say, but I was reading recently about um, this concept, quiet quitting, which is, I don't know if you've read anything on this, Jason, but, you know, during, after COVID, they were talking about the great resignation. Uh, yep. But now, now what they're talking about is this thing called quiet quitting, where people essentially are, you know, doing the bare minimum in their job and not going above and beyond, not, uh, not, um doing anything kind of out of the ordinary just kind of just doing their job essentially but actually what we're doing is with give learn is we're again that the company is you know you're valuing your people you're motivating your people you're inspiring your people to to go one step further to come again to live classes with with some incredible um presenters and course leaders and so on and um, so we're seeing we're getting great feedback from 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 companies and from individuals around how it's having a positive impact on their on their personal and their professional development. Man, that's outstanding. And you know, the world needs a lot more of that today. You know, the top three reasons why people do leave organizations is one, a bad boss, or at least the perception of a bad boss, bad culture, or number mm -hmm. three. Number three, they're just not challenged. They're not motivated. They're not engaged, right? They're there, they're there. Leaders are busy. And you can be a great leader. You can be a really good leader, honest, trustworthy, all that kind of stuff, but be too busy, maybe too disconnected from time to time to really understand where some of these people are and what they could do, what their potential could be. I think that over gets overlooked sometimes because they hire people to do a very specific thing. They have, you know, 10 other gifts and talents that they can be contributing to and they want to contribute, but nobody really connects those dots. Nobody really um, thinks that broadly about their people as, as, you know, broader, uh, assets. And so mm. people do get, especially in this day and age of instant gratification, they do get demotivated pretty quick. They, so you need to engage your people. They need to constantly grow and learn and evolve and feel like they went to work, did great work, but also, um, learn something and, and, and and have some additional skills and different ways of thinking and they've connected to people they didn't know before that could create an opportunity for them, right? It's just that constant yearning to fill people's cup and people's cup gets drained every single day. The world's got a lot of drama in it, unfortunately, and people's cups get drained in many ways and you got to constantly keep filling these cups and they, you don't have to spend tons of money doing it. You can just do it in small little ways that make a world of difference. And I think if you think about it that way, um, I think that can make a drastic difference and you can see a lot of changes in 
uh, your retention and the culture and, and the happiness of the people and the quality of work, you know, being willing to work an extra hour, go the extra mile, uh, help somebody that's, you know, a new employee that's struggling, whatever that may be, these things go a long way. I'm sure you see the same things too. Yeah. And, and, and uh, on that, I think as well, just to, just to echo and add to that is that, you know, the research shows that, that people want to work for a company having a positive, positive impact in the world. And I think, it, you know, as you, as you, in terms of Gen Z and so on and future generations, and I think with Give Learn, our, my, my vision has always been that, you know, someone comes to a class, they invest in their personal and professional development, they're doing good for themselves but then they should be doing good for someone else somewhere else. And that's really what we're, what we're building out. So we've partnered with a, a giving platform called B1G1, which has uh, 500 vetted social causes around the world. Um, and on our platform, when, again, when you attend the live classes, you earn points, you can donate those points to, uh, to a social cause uh, via B1G1. Um, and then we, Further than that, you can also win a trip on the on the Virgin Voyage cruise ship as well if you want to do that. So, so, so <laughs> and that who wouldn't want to do that, right? Who I mean, would want to do that? Yeah. Although I haven't, I haven't, I haven't broken the news that you're going, the person will have to bring me as their plus one, but. <laughs> and that's a joke. By the way. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! And I don't know any other platform uh, out there that that connects in this giving way. People, you're right. That you know, especially. Uh, in today's world, people want to be about positivity, create positivity and 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 contribute in whatever ways that they can contribute. So, man, God bless you for creating, you know, the thoughtful kind of well-rounded platform like that. That's about learning and receiving, but it's also about giving as well. And I think when people feel like they're giving and making a difference, that adds a whole nother dynamic and, and set a purpose for them uh, you know, to, to do good things in the world. So James, my goodness, man, I feel like we, we just kind of scratched the surface today. Mm -hmm. I feel like we can talk another three hours and, and, and not miss a beat. And it's just, thank you for what yep. you do. Thank you for all the great things you are doing and the people you're surrounding yourself are doing. We need that. Appreciate that. And thank you so much for being on the show, taking some time yeah, to spend me. with with me and our audience and the people that listen to the podcast. I know it's going to make a difference uh, for them. And so, James, you mentioned it before, but as we leave, how do people learn more? How do they connect to you? How do they, um, you know, get get on your platform? Perfect. So, so you can go to www givelearn.net that's g i v e l e a o r n uh, givelearn.net you can connect with me on uh, on linkedin at james kluski uh, c l u s k e y um and on the website on givelearn.net you can you can uh, you can request a demo i'm happy to jump on and or one of the team can jump on and show you that show you the platform um and if you want to reach out to me directly on on linkedin You'll, you'll get me there as well. Um, so it'd be great to, to uh, yeah, to, to hopefully hear from some of your audience. And, and I've really enjoyed the conversation, really passionate about, you know, soft skill development, performance, being at your best and so on. So if I can help anyone in any way, please, please do reach out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, folks, that's it for today's session. It's a real pleasure to have James on the show. Wish you all the best of luck and tune in next week. Uh, next week, we're talking about something uh, really powerful. It's a nice piggyback off of this discussion as well. Uh, we're talking about the power of data and how to best use data and analytics to drive organizational excellence, to take your business to the next level and to, and to make um, the best decisions possible for the long-term good of your organization. So look forward to, to digging into that with you next week. Hope everybody has a great week. Take care.